Focus, attention, clarity of thought, and crystal clear memory is something that most of us hold dear, and we hope to be able to maintain and improve as we age rather than see it declining. What role might hyperbaric play in your ability to maintain your cognitive performance over your entire lifespan? That is what we're gonna cover in today's video. All of the cells in our body, other than the red blood cells that carry oxygen, utilize oxygen in order to produce energy, ATP. Different cells and tissues utilize different amounts of oxygen, really based on their activity level. Our brain makes up about 2% of our body mass, yet uses up between 20 and 25% of all of the oxygen that we bring into our body. So our brain and our nervous system are literally one of the most metabolically active systems that we have. Proper quality and quantity of fuel, as well as the proper quantity of oxygen, is really the mixture that we need to make sure cells are getting everything that they require for energy production and cellular or tissue performance. So much so that when we look at neurodegenerative diseases, mild to moderate cognitive decline, or within the different types or categories of dementia, chronic hypoxia is one of the main common denominators. Particularly in the last three to five years, an effort has been made to conduct quite a bit of research on hyperbaric's effect in cognitive decline and specifically helping neurodegenerative disease and the overwhelming majority of those studies have shown tremendous improvement in memory, focus, attention, and processing speed. So as a result, we can understand as a brain is declining and we are able to deliver higher levels of oxygen, the end result is improved neurological performance. And quite honestly, there's enough data at this point that saying hyperbaric helps people suffering from cognitive impairment or dementia would benefit from increased levels of oxygen, slowing and even potentially reversing some of the symptoms associated with these issues. So with that in mind, would it potentially make sense to apply that thought process to cognitive performance and cognitive improvements in otherwise healthy individuals? One argument that I hear periodically regarding this concept and the reason not to use hyperbaric is, well, we're already 100% saturated with oxygen. So A, how could you possibly ever get more oxygen than the amount that you have? And B, just because you did get more oxygen into the system, prove to me that it's useful. Prove to me that we are increasing our ability to perform cellularly at any level and utilize this oxygen that you're driving into the system. So let's address both of those. First of all, yes, hopefully if you're healthy, healthy lungs, healthy heart, surrounded by an atmosphere, hopefully close to sea level pressures, you should be almost 100% saturated with oxygen, which means you really don't have much room on your red blood cell to carry anymore. However, hyperbaric doesn't rely on that system because we're temporarily increasing atmospheric pressure, and in many cases, we're increasing the percentage of oxygen. We are bypassing red blood cell carrying capacity, and we're actually driving oxygen into the plasma of the blood. As a result, red blood cell carrying capacity is no longer the limiting step to how much oxygen we could actually drive into someone's circulation and then ultimately deliver to cells and tissues. Next is just because we got more in, prove to me that it's actually useful. Well, studies have been done comparing pre and post hyperbaric against physical activities, cognitive activities, and then even dual tasking or multitasking people doing physical and cognitive activities simultaneously. Right now, under normal atmospheric conditions, your body constantly shunts blood to different parts of your body based on requirement or activity. So if you were to eat a big meal right now, your body would pull blood to your digestive system in order to digest properly. And then if you were to get up and run, it would move that blood from your digestive system to your legs because your legs are demanding more fuel in order to do that work. So even though you're 100% saturated, that doesn't mean your body is easily able to multitask because your body is always delivering more blood flow and more oxygen to whichever tissues are demanding the most in a moment. As a result, when we do a single task, like a physical task, we are capable of a certain amount of work. And when we dual task people, the body is fighting, trying to drive blood to two different areas simultaneously. And often what we would find is a decrease in performance. In studies that have looked at this, not only do they find the capacity for work in a single task increased, in other words, the physical performance had X amount of work pre-hyperbaric, they were able of more work post-hyperbaric. So that increased level of oxygen provided enough fuel to drive an increased performance. And that happened for every participant inside of the single task in both the physical and the cognitive groups. More importantly, the average was a doubling of their capacity for multitasking. So pre-hyperbaric versus post-hyperbaric, 
doing a physical and a cognitive activity simultaneously, the average was a doubling of their performance. So increasing this free-floating oxygen allowed the body not to have to shunt blood flow as aggressively because there was more free-floating oxygen available for those tissues to just grab, allowing this increased level of performance. So just a quick summary. Right now, we understand that hyperbaric does reduce the symptoms and even in some cases potentially reverses a variety of cognitive decline and neurodegenerative disease. And we know that if we give hyperbaric to otherwise healthy people, their performance is able to increase both physically and cognitively. If you like this information, if you find it valuable, please hit the like button, absolutely subscribe. We're putting out new content all the time. YouTube absolutely rewards us by getting more people to find this information when more people are liking and subscribing. So please allow us to help other people as much as we're helping you. Like it, subscribe it, and send this video to somebody that you might think will benefit from it. We also understand that right now you are carrying the maximum amount of oxygen available. So you're using that oxygen just to listen to this video or to cook dinner later or to go to the gym and exercise. Do you really have enough oxygen that you need to do all the tasks that your body's required to do and to support other issues that may come up? Higher levels of stress, injuries that never healed properly, even just the wear and tear of being active and on planet Earth. Is it possible that increasing your exposure to oxygen periodically and strategically would not only certainly allow your body to do all of the things that it's doing right now, but with that surplus, use that oxygen for other reasons like healing, recovery, regeneration, and or even just increasing physical or cognitive performance. And the signs and symptoms associated with cognitive decline are really attributed to chronic inflammation, mitochondrial dysfunction, and as I said earlier, a common denominator is hypoxia. So inside this chamber, you're already creating hyperoxia where there was hypoxia. We know, and it's very non-controversial to say that hyperbaric reduces chronic inflammation. And we also know, and it's not controversial to say that hyperbaric increases oxygen to the mitochondria, helping to upregulate ATP or cellular energy. Oxygen is an ingredient that your body requires for function. Right now, you're limited to the amount that you can carry. And utilizing something like hyperbaric increases your capacity to bring more into your body and ultimately deliver more to your cells. Just like other nutrients, you take certain nutrients because maybe you're not eating certain foods. You take certain nutrients because you understand that they're supporting your body in different ways. And you may take different amounts of those nutrients periodically, depending on what your health status is at any given time. Oxygen could be viewed very similarly. It's foundational for your health. And just like there's benefits of having a healthy diet, that's foundational to your health. There's benefits of exercise. It's foundational to your health. You should not necessarily expect to be able to maintain a very high quality of life throughout the entire aging process if you're not fueling and moving your body the way you need to throughout the aging process. Likewise, you should not expect to be able to maintain and improve your health over time if you're not getting enough oxygen. And most certainly there are other strategies, simple strategies like making sure you breathe correctly and fully on a regular basis. Do breath work to increase some oxygen. Even with exercise, you deliver more oxygen into your lungs and you deliver more oxygen to your cells. So it's not like hyperbaric is the only oxygen answer. However, it's the only oxygen answer that actually creates a surplus that allows your body to do an extended amount of work and or go back and heal issues that you may have had in your past and help improve cellular resilience and adaptation, ensuring a much higher quality of life for a much longer period of time. Of course, there's other ingredients to managing your health span, but these three, diet and nutrition, which all of you already know, and oxygen are really the foundation of that process. People ask me all the time if I use hyperbaric. So I've been utilizing hyperbaric for almost 20 years. And in that time, that doesn't mean I've been doing two atmospheres on 100% oxygen five days a week for 20 years, of course not. But because I do actually have a family history of dementia and because I really put a high demand on my brain on a regular basis, I do think hyperbaric is a critical component to my own wellness strategy. The overall program that I do today is honestly different than what I used to do and it's probably different than what you should do because I've done so many hours over such a long period of time. But I generally get maybe an hour or two a week, that's really it, and four times a year, I do a 30 to 40 hour program over a two to three week period. And quite honestly, it's those clusters that I do every quarter that I feel the biggest boost from. If you've never really done hyperbaric, that's not the way I would recommend. I really recommend people doing a program that's more intense in the beginning 
at least to start to set things in motion, create momentum, and gain some of the real benefits, the long-term benefits of hyperbaric, and then move into more of a maintenance type program. So please keep that in mind if you're first getting into this. So should hyperbaric be a part of a long-term approach for maintaining and improving health over time? I think it should be, and I use it accordingly. Hope you found this helpful. If you know anybody that might benefit or that's been asking that same question, please feel free to share this material, and I'll see you on the next video. Whether you're a chiropractor or a naturopath, or an acupuncturist, or a DO, or even an MD, but you're looking at hyperbarics through this lens, the lens that I'm describing, which is applying hyperbarics for all these off-label conditions, this is the class that teaches that. And right now it's the only class that teaches this type of hyperbarics in this way, and that's an actual certification course. Check out hbotusa.com, and uh, right across the, the top you'll see upcoming events. You can click on that, and it'll show you uh, when our next courses are gonna be.